Right, good evening everybody. Uh, this is the Year 9 Information Evening. Uh, my name is Mr Broom and my uh, email details are on the first side of the screen just in case you need to get in touch with me throughout the year. Uh, these are the form tutors for your pupils. Uh, there are five forms as it were last year. We've had a few changes in terms of form tutors. So 9E, Mrs Allerton has replaced Mr Hodgson. Uh, Mr Ahmad has remained with 9S but he's also joined by Mr Duval. Um, but the other form tutors remain the same from last year. As you can see the email addresses are on the screen. So, these are the things that are upcoming with Year 9 this year. Now obviously, uh, right at the top of the list uh, are the lessons that are being taught with GCSE content, uh, in particular with the sciences, MFL, RE and English. Uh, obviously options are being chosen this year, so the drop-down days, uh, the first one coming up uh, on the 14th of October, were all designed to help students not just with their options choices, but with fitting in their options to careers choices. Uh, there's a much level, higher level of critical thinking. Uh, the demand in terms of the homework is going to increase and probably the length of time for homeworks as well. Uh, and we have higher expectations from the teachers, higher expectations of attendance and punctuality. Uh, a much greater focus this year on positive behaviour uh, as a result of uh, returning to more normal situations post-COVID. Uh, and of course we've got uh, adolescent changes as well in terms of uh, how that's going to impact behaviour and attitude and focus for your uh, children. In direct relation to that, this is the stuff that we are doing as part of the PHSE curriculum this year. We started off with social media. Uh, I want um, to not only deal with that in lessons, but I've already started the students off with a um, creation of a survey with a view to creating a contract for social media use outside school. Uh, so that's going to be something that I would like you as parents to get involved with as well. Uh, obviously we're going to move to careers and options uh, and the other things on the list. Uh, obviously the first focus is going to be uh, helping your students choose their GCSE options but there's also a lot of other uh, important stuff in terms of sex education and uh, knowing their position in terms of their legal rights etc. Uh, as the year goes on. As I said already, um, our first drop down day, our acting learning day, is the 14th of October, so that's uh, a week today. Um, the first uh, focus is going to be on um, careers and how they relate to the GCSE, GCSE options that your students will be taking. So that will be a whole day off timetable, uh, but students will be expected to be in uniform. So it's just a heads up in terms of um, what the content of that day is going to be. Just a few administrative things, uh, detentions. Uh, detention day for year nine is a Monday, straight after school. Um, you will be informed of that by the Thursday of the previous week. Uh, these detentions cover all areas apart from homework, which is the role of the uh, department area to deal with. So all of the detentions, bar those, will take place on a Monday. The detentions for subject areas for homework will be decided by the, by the subject area themselves. So this section is all about what you can do to help your student uh, at home, but also what the students need to be doing as well. So I'm going to flick through these quite quickly. Um, on a basic level, um, there's a full list. None of these are particularly rocket science, uh, but they're just there to, to guide you in terms of what you can be doing to help out um, your child at home. Um, in terms of methodology, I don't want to teach grandma to suck eggs, but the, here's a, some, some basic um, directions for you to go down in terms of making sure that your child uh, does what's required. Um, as far as the students are concerned, this is what they need to focus on. So they need to be hitting 96% plus attendance. They need to be on time in school every single day, but also for afternoon registration and for all their lessons. They need to make sure that their uniform is right, that they've got all the correct equipment, uh, and that their bag is packed the night before, preferably, 
and that all their homeworks are met. And in particular, if they've been absent, they need to make sure that they catch up immediately, not necessarily the next lesson, but as soon as they return uh, on their first day back. There's a few slides here just to help you out with revision. I'm not, I'm not saying that you need to set your revision stall out now, but obviously if you can get it right this year, it becomes a lot easier uh, for your student to be convinced of what they need to do um, when it comes to year 10 and year 11. One of the things that we are focusing on this year though uh, is this whole idea of how to retain information. So this uh, methodology here is, is backed up by lots and lots of evidence. Um, the fact that reviewing of work uh, on, a, on a regular basis not only means that the students understand things more but they retain the information better. So for instance, if they review their work for their lessons on the day that they actually do it, so they read through what they've written in their books, that takes around about five minutes. Then if they revisit that two days later and a week later and then a month later, then the chances of them actually retaining that information is much greater. If they can actually create the first time around a series of questions that they can ask themselves to check that their knowledge is in place, then that will actually help retain information even better. Uh, reading, um, not just the notes, but trying to improve their literacy also um, has been evidenced in terms of improvement in grades, so I would definitely encourage that. But here are some sites that they can do, uh, that they can visit regularly to improve their subject knowledge. So you've got GCSE, Pod, Caboodle, Seneca, etc. They are all um, specifically designed for their syllabuses at GCSE when they get around to choosing them. This is what we're looking at. It's called Rose and Shine's Principles of Instruction. So if you have a look through all of these, it'll give you an idea of the sorts of things that are going on in lessons in every subject area. So if you do have a look at the books, you should see examples of this on a regular basis. Um, there are basically 10 different areas. So there's evidence here about what teachers should do. Should do. There's evidence about what students should do both inside and outside the classroom. So that's there for you to have a read through to see if you can use that to aid your students learning at home. Here are some key dates for the year. So on here we've got when the data captures are coming through, we've got the parents' evenings and the options evening, of course, which is massively important in, in terms of helping your student uh, choose their options. The deadline for the options forms are due in on the 25th of February, so that's a massively important uh, date to remember because that's where we start basing our timetable on. Unlike other years, uh, year nine reports are earlier, so they're after data capture two, uh, whereas normally they'd be after data capture three, and that's all designed to aid with uh, making sure that the options choices that you're making are correct and giving students enough time to improve in subject areas that they've chosen for options if they need to do that by the end of the year. And then we've got the end of year exams on May. The, uh, May 2022 with the final data capture in, in June 2022. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, this is my contact email address if you need to get in touch with me for anything this year, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, there's a telephone number there with my personal extension on it as well so that you can get in touch with me directly. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say. So it's nice to speak to you again uh, and thank you for listening. Hello everybody, I'm really pleased to be able to speak to you again. Um, I'm going to be speaking about safeguarding, about safety messages and also a little bit about support and you may feel that you've heard some of these messages before um, but I won't apologise for repeating them because I think they're really important messages that we need to hear numerous times in, and just to recap and remind ourselves how important it is that we work together to keep uh, our children safe. Our principles of the behaviour policy remain for students to be ready, respectful, responsible and safe and that way we hope that they will be able to be successful as they move through the school and into the future. Um, I'm Helen Dolphin, Assistant Head Teacher for Student Welfare and Support and uh, I know I've met many of you previously. Uh, my contact details are on the slide as well. 
Um, firstly, I'd just like to encourage you to go on to Sims Parent and have a look at the details that we hold about you and your child. This is really important for safety because if anything happens in school and we have to get in touch with you, we need to know that we've got numbers that are accurate. It's really easy when you're inputting numbers for a mistake to be made in one digit or another digit and then we've got a wrong number. So it's really good if you could check for us that everything's accurate and if your child has changed anything in terms of their medical information so they may well be taking medication or anything else could you update that for us please because it, it, it sends us an alert and we can send you a, an updated healthcare plan um, if you're unsure about how to access sims parent if you go onto the website and you look under parents and then it support guides you'll you'll find an information booklet there to help you but if you still can't if you're still having problems please get in touch with us COVID is obviously still with us and we have sent updated information just in the last few days um, and unfortunately we've had to go back to students wearing masks around school and in classrooms and our corridors and this is to keep everybody safe. We've, we've had a number of cases in school so we're just trying to limit the impact really um, and some of these things we, we still should be focusing on good hand hygiene and distance wherever we can and I just encourage you that if your child is ill that you make sure if they've got any symptoms of COVID that you send them for a test, that you're doing lateral flow tests regularly, uh, but that you keep us informed. And could you do that on a daily basis, please? So if your child is ill, that you let us know if they're ill and the symptoms they have. But if you do have a PCR test and it's positive, you let us know. And equally, you let, let us know if it's negative as well, so that uh, the information we have is up to date. I'm sure you've heard about the vaccination programme for young people and this will be taking place at Stretford Grammar School uh, provincially, uh, pro provisionally excuse me, from the 20th, 21st and 22nd of October, so just there before half term. We're just going to be the venue and it's run by health services um, and I've put a, a link there to an information booklet that you can find about the vaccinations and about how to consent for them but the health service will be in touch with you uh, well before that date providing you with more information as well. I've just had it confirmed as well that all students at Stretford Grammar will be offered the nasal flu vaccine before Christmas. We're looking at the end of November at the minute and again that will be consent forms sent to you online that we'll be sending shortly. If you need any more information on them just take a look at the link or contact the school nursing service who I'm sure will be pleased to, to provide you with that information. Just a reminder of the safeguarding team. Safeguarding is everybody's business in school. Every adult in school has a mind on safeguarding, keeping everyone safe. But we do have a team and you can contact us. I would encourage you, if there's anything at all that you're concerned about, even if it's a really small thing, and you think it might be insignificant is to just take take a risk and, and let us know because sometimes it's just a small piece of information that, that fits into a wider picture um, and it is really really helpful when we find out about that so don't hesitate I'm pleased this year that we've also decided to take the decision for progress leaders to undertake level four safeguarding training so we've got a lot of expertise on the team and we're, we're willing to to help and support you wherever you need it I don't know if your child's spoken to you about this already this year, but we, we've, uh, we've launched this campaign of Never OK in School, and it's resulted after the, I'm sure you've heard about the Ofsted report into sexual violence and sexual harassment. And the key things to come out of that report was that we, we need not to be complacent. We know we're a really good school and that the relationships in school are very, very positive. Ofsted reports always comment on that and students comment on it but I think the report tells us that we need to not be complacent we need to make sure that we are listening to young people and young people were saying in that report that there is it exists it's out there and just because we don't know about it doesn't mean that it isn't happening it means that young people are not willing to share with us so we're really focusing on this year on getting students to speak up on educating them more about relationships and appropriate relationships and how to report where behaviours are not acceptable. And indeed, there's going to be a survey this week 
that will be out there on Google Classrooms for uh, children in Stretford Grammar to let us know how they feel about behaviours and safety in school. And so that we've got a really clear picture um, and we're not being complacent, we really do want everybody to, um, to take part in that survey so that we've got a good idea of what's going on in Stretford Grammar and we can action plan to make it an even safer place than it already is. This is some of the things that were said, and this is why we need not be complacent, because 92% of girls and 74% of boys who were part of the survey said that sexist name-calling happens. So I think sometimes when we talk about sexual violence and sexual harassment, we see it on a, on a, on a big scale. But sometimes it's just those harmful sexual behaviours or comments, comments to young people about their bodies that peers make to each other that actually are really quite harmful. So we're looking at the whole scale of um, sexual violence, sexual language, and we want to make sure that Stratford Grammar is a place where it's not tolerated. Um, obviously through PSHCE students learn about appropriate relationships and we want to make sure that we are creating an environment where students feel comfortable in sharing if any of these um, behaviours are found in Stratford Grammar. And these were the reasons why young people said they didn't want to share and they ranged from being too embarrassed, trying to deal with things on their own. Lots of young people said that they felt that when, um, when they told that something was happening or they reported a behaviour that they felt out of control. So what we started to do in school, we've had a focus group called Be Heard and every student in Stratford Grammar is, 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 you know, is, is welcome to take part in that group and we're asking students how we might support them to be able to speak to us more openly, what kinds of things, what kinds of things we can put in place, so we're wanting to listen. So maybe this is something to talk to your child about and encourage them to get involved. Um, there are lots of people, lots of students in this school who are very good at leading the way and telling us how they feel about things. And I'd encourage you to, to tell your child to be part of that. Um, one thing we did listen to was lots of young people said it was difficult to approach an adult. And I know there are children in school who don't want to speak directly to an adult. So we've added on the website a place for them to be able to report any behaviours which are inappropriate. So if you go to the website and to students and you scroll down to well-being and then you click on that, you'll see that on the left there is a box where you can report concerns. Um, it does ask us, it does ask students to give their email address, their school email address, and this is just so that we can confirm that it's come from a student in Stratford Grammar. Um, but equally, what we do try and do when things are reported is keep the child, the child who's done the reporting, out of it. So wherever possible, we use methods so that we don't have to say that somebody um, and give specific names of people have reported incidents. So please tell your child not to be worried that they're going to be named and, and you know, have to stand up to say that something's happened. Um, you can also report something via this method as well. Um, it does say to put your school email address, but you can put your own. If there's something you've seen, if you've been looking on social media, if there's something you see that concerns you, please don't hesitate, report it to us. This is in relation to online sexual abuse, but I would also say that this here applies to all online activity, young people's online lives. And this is what we're saying that parents and carers can do and it fits into talk. So number one is talk to your child about online behaviour. This is what young people are saying that actually they, they would like us to do, even though it often seems like they don't. Um, and I would encourage all parents to find some time in the next few weeks to work through a family agreement. And what I really like about this document, which can be found, found on ChildNet, you've got the link at the bottom, is that it guides your questioning. So if you feel you're a little bit out of your depth and your child knows more than you do, this is just a starting point and it's a really good way of finding what websites they use, what do they think it's okay to share online, um, what can you do when things go wrong. It's, it's a really good starting place to have that conversation and I think you're probably the person who's paying for the phone, paying for the contract and if there are any difficulties online it's going to come back to you. So I think it's important that your child knows this has to be a family agreement, this has to be, there has to be some negotiation here and there have to be some boundaries. 
and I think as students get older, young people get older, we tend to back off and I think what the recent reports have shown us is let's not be complacent, we need to engage with this, we need to know what's going on because believe me, sometimes when incidents are brought to our attention and we have screenshots and we see the activity online, many parents are shocked by it. They would never have imagined that their child would engage in such activities. So I would assume that it's happening unless you know otherwise. So it's, it's our right to check. And I think young people need to know that that is our right and it's also the, the correct behavior for us. Um, there are lots of WhatsApp groups out there that have got lots and lots of students in and unless we monitor them, unless you monitor them, because we, we can't in school, unless you monitor them, we don't really know what's happening uh, on those, on those um, platforms. And you can then have a family agreement. And I think it's really helpful if you agree to things as well. So it might be that you're wanting your child to keep their phone downstairs, that it works much better if you buy them an alarm clock and they're not just using their phone. Because we often find when we, when we investigate incidents that things have happened past midnight. You know, when you sometimes parents think that children are in bed and asleep, they're actually not, they're online. And um, really that's not very helpful in terms of monitoring behavior, but also getting enough sleep to come to school in a good state the day after. So I would encourage you to draw up an agreement and something to come back to, maybe come back to it next year or even earlier than that so it's really clear what kind of behaviours are acceptable. We're really pleased um, that the, the Children's Code has been brought into place now and it should help us in terms of making um, social media companies more accountable for the images that they show and the adverts they show and also what they do with the data that they have from you, young people. For instance, Instagram are now defaulting under 16 accounts to private. I think this is really good news. It possibly doesn't go far enough, but it's a start. And if we come there, we've looked at talking to your child, having those conversations, agreeing the ground rules, but also learning about the platforms and apps that they use which I think we're often playing catch up. I know lots of people work in the area of technology and you may well be ahead of your children, but there are also lots of people who aren't and there are things that they're using that you're unsure of and it's difficult to keep up to date with it. I really like Parents Own. I promote it. I'm not paid by them and there is a paid version of this if you wanted to sign up for it, but I like it because it's clear, it's kept very up to date, it's really easy to use and it gives you information about a range of topics. It's not just online safety, but things about education, health and well-being, about relationships and sexual activity. You might be wondering if your child, the behaviours you've seen from your child are normal or expected for their age, and you can go on here. It's got some um, age guides, age-appropriate relationships. And I know I've showed you, probably shown you this last year, but just a reminder to you that it also gives you information about lots of the apps that they use and lots of websites, things about critical thinking uh, also, because I think it's really important that we don't just stop young people from using technology. It's a great tool, there are lots of benefits, but we need to make sure that they are critical users, that they think about what they're doing, they think about the information that they're presented with. Say your child tells you, for instance, I'm using whatever, and something I've, I've chosen Discord because we had some difficulties with this last year. You can go onto something like Parent Zone and look it up and get some information about it so you know what they're using, uh, not just taking it for granted that it's something that's safe. Um, and I like the way it gives age restrictions for you. So we know here they have to be at least 13, but equally it gives you some of the safety features. So you know that they've got those safety features activated, you can check on them, and it tells you any of the risks that are there. Because what we're finding increasingly is that young people are aware of the risks. We teach them about it throughout school and indeed in primary school, but they're actually sometimes the pull of, of being involved or taking the risk is greater than, than actually thinking what might happen in the future if they take the risk. So I think we have to step in there and make sure that we are keeping them safe. That's the front page, so the parent info gives you all information about families in a digital world and I've put some other information if you prefer to watch short films, if that, that helps you more you can go to Think You Know How 
And as I say, learn about digital resilience. I think it's really important that we learn how to be a resilient person online. Internetmatters.org, just a reminder, that's another place where you could find really useful information and videos, information videos. And the UK Safer Internet Centre is a fantastic place to, to keep up to date as well. Uh, the mix is something that is designed for young people and it's very much geared towards them. It's not an information site like the others for parents and, and guardians, but this is for, for young people. So if they're having difficulties online, this is one of the things you can encourage them to look at themselves. Lots of um, forums on there and tools and asking them in a safe space to, to make their own voice heard. So there's lots of information. And, I'd encourage you to take a look at that. And we do put information about IT safety online. So under parents, you can find e-safety, where you can find links to lots of different things that you might want to look at to support you in keeping your child safe. I think there are lots and lots of really good sources of information. And sometimes it's, it's about figuring out which work for you and navigating your way through that information. And just a reminder that if you see anything in school, if you see anything online, excuse me, to, to report it, to encourage your child to report it to SEOP, where they'll find child protection advisors who can take on the issues and advise them what to do and look into it. It's a really good way of reporting online abuse. We are not a school, as you know, who, who don't get involved. If there's something happening online, it's definitely going to impact on relationships in school. So please let us know if there's something you see you're not happy with, let us know if we can have screenshots of things. But this is a, another more, you know, a, another avenue you can take just to report things that you see you're not happy about. And this is just a version which tells your child um, how to go about that. If they see something themselves they're not happy about, they know it's not safe. I know we, we, it's, it's very difficult sometimes to think about our children being involved in radicalisation or online grooming, but it's certainly out there and it's certainly a risk. And, you know, when you read some of the reports, it's often children from, from very, very positive family backgrounds who are involved as much as children who actually have had a more troubled background. So I would just encourage you and just remind you to look for changes in behaviour I think a lot of it is normal teenage behaviour. In year nine, we're seeing that, that grow, that they're growing up and wanting more freedom. But equally, don't just look through at the whole picture and the kinds of behaviours that you're seeing. And, you know, get in touch with us if you see anything that you think there is a, a big change in behaviour here and I'm not sure about it. And we can help and we can look at the behaviours in school and see to try and manage the risk to see if there is any risky behaviour that we need to look into further. And this is not to be alarming, but I think we just have to be aware of it and monitor it. And finally on this section there is, um, I think in terms of lockdown we saw an increase in eating disorders and it's often very difficult to know what to do as a parent. Um, this website here that you've got the link to, Action for Children, just gives some guidance. So if you're concerned at all, speak to us but also have a look at the things that you can do to support your child if you're not happy with their eating habits the last section for me is about support services in school i know hopefully you know by now as a year nine parent that we've got lots of support in school for children who are struggling in any way uh, we have purchased something um, a, a, that goes with class charts which is a well-being app and it means that students can check in regularly to tell us how they're feeling whether it be positive or negative and that alerts the form tutor so the very what we can offer in terms of support is a check-in so just an adult checking in with a child every week or, or more often or less often just to see how they are and we'll often do an emotional scale so it'll be how are you on a scale of one to ten and it's just not particularly intrusive and it's easy for a child to engage with but we can keep an eye on them we also have well, tomorrow we are we've, have, we've got interviews for a school counselor so we've decided to have a full-time school counselor in school every day which is fantastic uh, lots of students access that service and that will continue very soon. 
We've also got a mentor who comes into school if your child feels they don't want counselling but would actually just like somebody to speak to. That's somebody who's uh, trained and works for the Samaritans. And it's really good news that we have been included in the first phase of mental health support teams because we've been saying for quite a long time that it's much more helpful if we have mental health practitioners in school rather than relying on external agencies. So we'll be um, having a mental health practitioner in school soon who will be able to do interventions with children and also with families uh, at a low level. We've also got um, trained mindfulness teachers still in school, so there'll be various sessions put on as the year goes on um, to tell your child about mindfulness and teach them some practices if they, if they think that's something for them. The school nursing service are really stretched at the moment because they are really heavily involved in the vaccination programme. So I would advise that if there is a medical issue rather than waiting for the nurse coming into school that you actually try and get a GP appointment, which I know is equally not very easy at the moment, but uh, that, that would be the advisable route at the moment. And additional organisations, we will have Cooth coming into school soon. Cooth is uh, an online counselling service for all young people in Trafford can access this. And it's one of those things that I think is worth sitting with your child and just having a look at before any problems arise, just to let them know, just see what you think of it in terms of what's this like, this Cooth? Shall we have a look together? Because it's there if there are any problems that emerge. And our connections with 42nd Street have been really positive. So you can refer into 42nd Street and they also do lots of online sessions for young people who are struggling. Trafford commission many services to support young people and this is just their, their latest offer. So just have a, have a look at that and see if there's anything that you, you think your child would benefit from. Some of them do have long waiting lists, some of them don't. So it's worth getting in touch with us and finding out about it. And finally, if you're concerned about your child's learning needs, um, you may be find that your child has been struggling and interventions that the class teachers have been putting in place have not had the impact that you would expect and you suspect that your child has a learning a, a specific learning need uh, please don't hesitate contact the SEM department uh, you've got the email address there and there's an online parent forum that is coming up shortly and if you're interested in that email the, D, the SEMD department because we can fix up an appointment for you in school to come and talk to the SENCO about the concerns that you have our information report for SCN is on the website and the Trafford local offer can be found on the internet as well, which, which gives you a, an idea of all the services that are in place uh, for children with additional needs. And just a final, please keep in touch with us. Um, you can email in, email um, Mr Broom or your child's form tutor. Sometimes it can be something very small that's happened at home, either the night before or the morning before school. And if we know about it, um, we can speak to your child, we can support, we can liaise with other subject teachers. It's always better for us to know and we work better when we work in partnership. So thank you for listening to us. Uh, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate. Send the questions in, because obviously online you're not getting the same opportunity uh, to put your hand up as you would in a hall and ask questions. But that doesn't mean to say you can't ask them. So please send in any questions you have. And thanks for listening again. Bye-bye.